Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. What's up, Andrew, Franco, Jason, Robert Van Poy? Hey, John. from Norway. God. Johnny, loud you. and clear. Loud and clear, checking in. Ah, Rudy. So you had a you had a good weekend then, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, did, didn't you guys check out that uh, new Amazon series, The Boys, that has the superheroes that aren't that are just jerks? I started watching that with Haley this weekend. Uh -huh. um, stayed up way too late. Thank you, James. Compressor is off. What's Compressor up from Cincinnati? Off. Afternoon, guys. What's up, Matt? It's a late afternoon for us. Barry. Dinando. Hey, man. You realize it doesn't work. I was waiting to see when you fix it. Oh, that's fine. No, no, I have okay. it right here. When you were I putting that on there, I was like, it, that's not going to stay, right? Because you realize you're putting it I on. I was about to put a screw, but I don't want to. Well, no, it you, you put it. But what I was saying is you put the, the tape on I this. Know, so I was man. like, go, go get some more tape. It was a good idea. Fix it. Okay. Just then. They're not going anywhere. Go ahead and fix it. Are you guys going to wait for me? Yeah, they'll wait for you. Hi. Oh, really? Cincinnati. He's in, he's in Sweden? What's up, Jason? Who's in Sweden? Jason. Hi, from Sweden. I think he's just being that. He's not in Sweden. I'm like, oh, you he's, never he's, know, man. No. He's, he's, he's... Yeah, I mean, he might as he well go. be where he's at. I mean, yeah. I'm sure the temperature up there is about the same. Um, yeah, yeah, why not? It's probably pretty close. Jesus. Uh, going to see you in a few weeks. Yes, Johnny, you are. It, um... Just curious, uh, how many industry guys are on here that are going to Knowledge Fest? That is brought to you by Amp Global, the sponsor of this trip to Knowledge Fest. That's right, the fine makers of Stinger, Phoenix Gold, Best ah. Kits, Pack, and, and Echo Master <laughs> are paying for our journey to Knowledge Fest, and they are going to be bringing us all kinds of shows. I wish, lol, right? JBL Infinity in the house. What's up, Powell? Um, I wish. Wisconsin. Oh. Hello from PR. Dude, man, don't howdy, gents. Iowa, Robert. Hey. Um, yeah. So yeah, we we should talk about it for a minute. Okay. So the trip to Knowledge Fest for those of you guys. When are you gonna start cranking Puerto out Rico. the keychains? Once we get back from Knowledge Fest and we kind of figure out. Okay. So like, the what's laser. Going on. Really? Oh, I, I was to totally wow, waiting for man, that to happen. Wow. Nope. I was waiting for that to happen because um, I knew as soon as the show went live, someone was gonna call. All right. So we put the laser. We tested. We made some cool stuff. Um, we didn't make any cool stuff. Oh, that was that was good. Um, but we put it back. Yeah, it's still in the box. Still in the box. Hi, Jen. Um, oh, Jen, what's going yeah. on? Uh, so we put it in the box again because we don't have space right now. So when we How come back from Knowledge been? Fest, Busy. then we figured it out. Yeah. Opinion on DIY. No, I have not voiced my opinion on DIY lithium publicly because I really don't know enough about it to... About what? The lithium. Uh, what we were talking about mm, with yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Kyle yeah, yeah, the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I honestly haven't put any brain power towards it. I'm done. Uh, yeah. Disney before Knowledge Fest? No, yeah. no, Knowledge Fest first. I'm going, going why, did, why didn't you just finish? Uh, because I'm just, yeah. Just finish, yeah, it's good. okay. Anyway. So for those of you that, hey, Hawaii next year. What? Vega, what's up, buddy? Mm -hmm. Anyways, so for those of you guys that, that aren't familiar with Knowledge Fest, Knowledge Fest is the industry what do you call it? Uh, get, uh, okay, it's, well, Dallas, there's three of them, four of them next year are where you have to be in the industry and it's it's where we all get together and we learn. Well, it's, convention, it's, it's, it's a convention. It's a convention Jeez. of so it's, knowledge. It's the 12 volt convention for professionals. Um, there's a bunch of you on here that are professional and a bunch of you that aren't professionals. And what we try to do is bring the show to you, the non-professional or the professional that just can't make it. Trade show and training. There we go. That works too. I like yeah. that. That's a, that, that's what I was trying to get out of. The, 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 the. God, it's Monday. Chicago. Thanks again for speaker yeah. adapters. They were perfect. There you go. That's the guy Shane you made those for today. Hey, so anyways, the whole purpose of this is to educate us and make us smarter. Um, this Dallas is the biggest show because that's where the industry awards are. That's the whole nonsense that we went through previously, and then the videos and why you got it. Why July basically sucked for YouTube. And Hello why our numbers Dallas. are just going. Yeah. But hey, today you guys got a uh, bunch of videos, and it was great. And uh, you got install diaries. You got this show from last week finally put up. Mm -hmm. You got 
uh, five minutes with five star recap. So I, I worked my butt off yesterday to make sure everyone had um, awards in schooling. Yeah. yeah. To make sure that it the videos like. are going and that this week is going to be a fun week. We're back at videos. We do have some so small stuff we still have left to do before we go. Yep. But other than that, how about ex professionals? You got to have a store under your belt. But the reason why we talk about it so much, even though a lot of you can't go, is because we take you guys with us. So we do several live shows that are, they're again, going to be brought to you by Amp Global, makers Amp Global. of those cool, yep. fine products. Um, I just want to say Pack Audio all the time because at the end of the day, I feel like Pack Audio well, is. Well, it's, the... it's like, like the main name. Hey, you know, what's when you up? say. When you say Pack Audio, everybody knows so, the Pack so Audio. So Aaron's made. in California and Ad is in Arizona. Oh, he's um, still in Arizona. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That idea Ad I had, we scrapped it. Um, it just, yeah. So, oh well. We should do a live show on that on the other channel. That would be way easier. Anyway, so the joy of Knowledge Fest is being able to bring you guys with us because we want to show you guys what the professional side us get have the get. Uh, have the ability to attend whether your local guy is attending it or not sucks to be him you know and then you can go to those guys and say hey did you attend knowledge fest and they can go no and you well you should have because you learn a lot of cool stuff there and then you know when you work on my car i feel like i'm having the the you know top flight top gun guys work on my car that's why we go i mean that's that's why we go so that we can learn and teach we're going to be teaching this year too which would be really cool and it's also great because you get to meet a ton of people that you know otherwise you only get to talk to on the phone yep. um, or you only interact with on texting through a messenger and stuff like that like johnny on here i've never actually met him but i'm really looking forward to it because i look at the cool sticker he makes me every day of the week no, no i mean like we met him at dallas last year did we meet year. him at dallas yeah. last year come on man was he the tall guy i was talking he to? he was the tall guy yes yes um so we met him at Dallas. He was like, so. he's so cool because he's like, hey guys, what's going on? We did this, we did that. So, yeah. Marty Dean. Yes. Marty Dean. You need to go. So, and, and here's the deal. Uh, oh yeah, so we'll do a shout out real quick. Marty Dean, anyone wants one of these guys right here? He sells these still. Aussie, Aussie irons. irons. That's Marty Dean's yeah. thing. Uh, thanks, Fernando. Yeah, see, Johnny, yeah, I apologize. <laughs> Well, okay, so there again, I'm trying to sit there and go, because when I, not, no, no, I was no, no, like, it's fine. I, it's no, fine. but the funny thing was, is I was like, I'm sitting there going, man, was he the big guy? No, because, I, I, see, yeah, yeah. Um, so because when we talk about Johnny, you, when I first, I thought you were shorter. When we talk about like, you, oh, he's, he's like, I don't remember, and I'm like, no, man, he's, he's a tall guy. Yeah, I don't yeah, and yeah. I remember, now, and actually, it's funny, because now I remember where we talked to him at. But okay. What's up, Chris? One time at Chris Knowledge Bennett. Fest. Oh Jesus! What Chris Bennett in the oh, house, Mr. Audio Show. One time at Knowledge Fest. One okay. Time. Rule of Knowledge Fest. We will show you guys all the stuff <laughs> that happens while the show is actually happening, and then once the show ends, the cameras go back into the room, get turned off, and because what happens at Dallas stays, stays in Dallas. at Dallas. Um, and that's really the social interaction portion of it. But we want. It's so to cool, man. Beer. It's exactly. so cool. You interact with with like. Right there, um, you got to install diaries today, man. Yeah, it, it's it's so it cool, today, man. And you're gonna get more this week, so that's where they're at. There was an install. There was three videos that got launched in the last two days. One yeah. of them was an install diaries, so go check that out. It was like 20 minutes long. Uh, you won't show nightlife. No, I never show nightlife, man, unless someone says show nightlife, because, I mean, honestly, added, do you, do you want anyone to see you at night? <laughs> Might be Good bad there. Um, triple talk there. No, no. <laughs> so, anyways, the the joy for us is that uh, Dean does Dallas. Exactly. October, man. It's in October. So, the, the joy of it is we get to take you guys along with us. We get to take you onto the show floor. And, and yep. something cool this year that I've been thinking about is... We're, we're, there's going to be a ton of vendors yeah. there, and we're going to try to show you as many of the vendors as possible. We're going to be doing try. as much live as we possibly yep. can. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I want you guys to think about is if you were to have a question for one of these vendors. So let me What's go. Up, over, Brooklyn. Let me go over real quick some of these vendors because these are some really. I'm excited about the, what they have at Dow's. Dow's being the big one. So we have Wet Sounds. Diamore Engineering is going to be I'm there excited, with Steve yeah. Mead. Mm -hmm. That's going to be cool because he's going to have those new giant amplifiers he's made. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, 
Uh, that's Diamore Engineering, Instagram or Facebook. Tony, mm -hmm. Tony D. Check mm -hmm. those out. Morell's going to be there. DS18. Um, obviously, the MEA is the association that's putting on. That's where our Saturday live show is going to be held from, which yep. I'll have all the times that our shows are going to be held live uh, next week. Correct. Rockford Fosgate, Kenwood, and uh, Dow Electronics, which is Sony. Mm -hmm. um, Hybrid, Zabco, they're going to be there. Sewer Vega Diamond, R, mm -hmm. Crown Zero, Sound Digital, Alpine, First Tech, ADS, JL Audio, and ADS is um, iData, just in case. So we Obviously, Amp Global, find sponsors of our trip. Johnny. Matt, uh, Kingpin Audio will be there. Audio Frog, Hertz Audison, uh, Vox, Sirius XM, yep. DD Audio, Audio Control, JVC, Cobra Escort, Metra, Kits and Harnesses, Sony, Directed Alarms, Mobile Solutions, of course, where Ad is at right now, M MSC America, which is your... Um, is that correct? What what is it? What is it? Uh, what, uh, that name just what? What what is this? What is uh? Uh, uh, -E uh <laughs> Come on, Helix. There we go. Yes, Helix. Braxton Jeez. Helix. Sorry, Braxton Helix. So they will be there. Excited about that one. Sorry, Monday brain fart. Uh, Focal Orca, yes. which is going to be Moscone and Illusion K40. Uh, then there's a bunch of little guys like Lynx Whale. If you if you guys want a list of what we're actually going to be looking at, you can go to um, Helix. Thank you, Ada. You can go to knowledgefest.org. Now, here's my thought. If you guys have any questions, because, like, think about it. If you had the ability to ask any one of these manufacturers a question. Oh, Blam. That's right. Forgot about Blam. Blam. Yep. Um, Aussie Irons will be there. Yes, Marty. So, definitely, if you want Aussie Irons, head to AussieIrons.com and pick up your charger for your Aussie item. Wink, wink. Anyways. Um, <laughs> so... If you guys were to have a question to ask any one of those people, what would it be? Because they're going to be there, and we're going to be standing in front of them. So That's don't, right, don't Brandon. Now, Brandon Stinger Green. Stinger, too. Yeah. Oh, Stinger Radar Detectors. Yeah, Stinger Forgot Radar about them. Detectors. Yeah. See, I know yeah. you guys. That's just, cool. Yeah. I, I was totally having a brain fart. And the yeah. funny thing is, is I really want to talk to Jason, because yeah. I really want to talk to Jason. So if you guys could ask any one of those. So if you're watching this live, save your question for right now. Save your question. But we're going to add... Well, you can type it later. You can, you can yeah. type it later, whatever. But I'll forget if you put it now. But think about it for a minute. You don't have to answer now, but think about it for a minute. One of those brands, if you were to ask one of them a question. I mean, it could be something simple like Alpine. When are you guys going to come out with a new R-Type 5 channel amplifier? Something like that. So, and, and uh, uh, Aussie Irons will be in the Mobile Solutions booth. Which yes. I figured that's, you would be. Yeah. So... If you guys have questions that you would like us to, we're, we're going to be the voice for you to ask those questions. We will ask those hard-hitting questions, Geraldo Rivera style. Hey, what do you think of this? Okay, so think about that. Like I said, you don't have to answer now. Check out the list. If you want to, you can go look at that. And then let us know, because I would love to have some of the questions from you guys that we can then ask them. Yep. I think yep. that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Three, three, identical, three identical questions for all vendors. Compare answers later. That's a good idea, Sean. But yeah. what are the three questions? That's right. what I'm getting at. Right. Oh, and Match. Forgot about Match. Yep. Match is yeah, cool. They Ma do that if you guys too. aren't familiar with Match, Match is cool. They make, um, it's called Match because they make like systems that go into cars. Like last year, you BMW. got the BMW. Yeah, that it's was this a little cool amplifier, amplifier that plugs right in and the CSP. Done. It's really neat. Really You're cool. slacking today because you stayed. Uh, until, okay, she's, she's upset. Remember I told you she was upset because I watched the boys last night? Really? And. It wasn't three, it was two, and let's be honest, that's a normal night. Hey, Victor, what's up? What's Did you up, like Victor? video today? Hey. Yeah, that got cut from the from the mega video, and just it was enough to go all on its own. So you got the cool one what's there. What's up, John? Oh, I just talked to John, actually. So I think on the 30th of September, we're going to have Kicker back. Oh, really? And I think we're going to get Bill. Was it Bill Braun that's coming on in September? If it is, that's who I requested, so I'm really excited. So we'll get Bill. You never met Bill. Mm -hmm. Bill Braun no, no, no. Uh, is who I want to have on because and I think who's coming. Um, Mom's on the show. What's up, Mom? Hi, Mom. Why shouldn't I eat yellow snow? I don't know. You're asking somebody that lives in Florida about yellow snow, Jason. Tisk tisk. We don't have those problems. <laughs> if it's yellow and it's snow, it comes in a cone, and it's called lemon. <laughs> Anyways. Or Polar Cup. Honestly, it'd be called Polar Cup if you're from around here. Um, so, 
Yeah, I think we're gonna have Bill on the 30th. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll know more about that. Now, Bill would be cool because, the reason why I wanna have Bill the show is because he, other than working for Kicker, which is really cool, he was a sound technician. He's also an Iaska judge. He's built several SQ cars. Um, and SQ stands for, <laughs> SQ stands for square, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, have to follow Andy on that one. The bats are out in force, yeah. Are the DD1s and the CC1s worth the money? If you're a professional, yes. Uh, the CC1 is nice if you're doing a lot of um, systems that don't have like DSPs built into them, where you're turning dials. All right, hold on. Hang on, okay, so let me see. So the CC1 is a crossover calibrator, which is this guy right here, and how it works is you play a test tone and you work the up and down on here. You work the plus and minus until you get it right there in the center where it says calibrated. This is really nice if you're doing like analog knobs and you need to set like a tweeter and you're really concerned about that crossover point. If this has become kind of like, I don't know if I need it anymore because most of the most of the time nowadays, I mean, obviously you, you want to have one, but with doing DSP and stuff like that, you just type in the number. So it becomes kind of like you don't really need this that much. Now, as far as the, the DD1s, you have the DD1 and the DD1 Plus. If you're a professional and you do this for a living or you're somebody that does this and you do a lot of amplifier gain settings, these are really nice. I would just spring for the plus because you can have a lot more fun with it because you can pick any gain overlap you want. And actually it's funny, I think Steve just did a video to doing the plus or talking nice. about the plus because yeah. you can do like 3.5 and, and you can do any number you want. But why you'd want these is because there again, I, and I heard somebody refer to these as the test lights for uh, amplifier gains. Yeah, it's essentially what they are, but they're super quick. Test lights for uh, test lights for test lights for well test lights for amplifiers. So yeah. instead of all right. So now from that perspective, yes, I would totally recommend these because you know if you're turning on amplifiers every day instead of just going like oh yeah that sounds good, um, you can boom they're done. Uh, Marty is hiring that is for sure. Uh, if oh, yeah. you're into that state that he lives in, you definitely want to go there and apply. Yeah. Um, so. Other than that, like the question was asked, uh, that same question was asked in the Instagram Live, and I had said, you know, there's the Lumi also. So if you're if you're a hobbyist, like a lot of you are, buying something like the Lumi or an oscilloscope digital multimeter might be a better buy, mm -hmm. only because you can use that to do a lot more stuff. If you're just concentrating on your equipment, then learning how to use an oscilloscope to set your gains and, and understanding that is probably way more beneficial to you than just being able to hit a, hit a light and being done. Reading that oscilloscope is, is really way cooler. Yep. Um, so from that perspective, plus you have a digital multimeter, so it will help you troubleshoot your system. You can do way more with it. There again, if you're just a guy like me that wants to have everything, buy everything. All right, what do you got? Yeah, all right, let's see, I have this one. Puerto Rico! How is it Milwaukee Siren Irons? We talked about those last week. They're yeah, good. They're good. They're good. Um, we use them every day, every day, every day, and we're going to find out what it's like to return one under warranty. Yes. Uh, what do you think of... Uh, we break them. What do you think about the new Pioneer 5500 NEX? I was checking in earlier today. Looks like it's another floating. Oh screen? yeah, yeah, it's the floating screen. Yeah. Honestly, I haven't even opened the floating screen radios at all to even look at them. Yep. Um, which I know is sad and we need to review them. But they came in right before vacation and just with all the other stuff we've had to do, I haven't even taken a look at it. Maybe we'll open one in the this week sometime and we'll put it on five minutes of five star. Yeah. So that you guys can just like, yeah, we'll do, we'll try to do that this week. We'll get one out of the box. We'll just kind of plug it in and we'll take you guys for a tour so you can see what the heck it does. All right, let's see. No, Robin did not win yet. The, uh, the contest isn't over until the last day of Knowledge Fest, which is a Sunday. It's a so Sunday. So we'll know then. All right, are you familiar with a Hi. Hi-Fi components. Hi-V. Oh. Hi-V components, Park speakers, Park Express, carrying them. Apparently they make... Like made by Swan. 
huge, a huge supplier. So a high end. No. Maker. So like Parts, Parts Express makes a ton or has access to a ton of different speaker brands, and the idea behind and they make, they're all. They make some, you can get some really high-end stuff there. I mean, they even sell Morel for, mm -hmm. I mean. The thing is, is that on this side of it, the structure is what the sales force needs. So when you look at a brand like a Focal, or you look at a brand What's like, that, a, Ethan? like an Audison <laughs> or something like that, they're structured and easy to move through. We don't have to worry about, we don't have the time to spend three hours talking about the characteristics of a mid-range and why you should be running active hobbyists and people that really can appreciate that do so that's and, and they're cheaper because you're not buying the crossover you're not necessarily buying something that's designed for a car but they still sound great so i haven't had time to play with all that stuff yet so if, you know if, if you've played with them let this guy know yeah um all right yeah how do i detect a thousand hertz tone from a head unit that has no bypass, no bypass or off or for a low pass filter. And that, my friends, is the other reason that, okay, you, you can't, okay? That's, you blow your speakers. So you, you have to be able to disconnect everything. That's, that's where you run into the problem when you're playing those test tones. Because if, you, if you're playing a 40 hertz or one kilohertz test tone and you're just cranking the volume up on it and you're playing that through the speakers, you're gonna blow your speakers. You're gonna blow whatever speaker's in there. So it's like, that's where it, you kind of fall flat, and it kind of isn't always the funnest thing ever. Uh, let's see. I don't know the mini DSP. There you go. So the so MRTA was given my. Do I truly have to use a relay when hooking go. up my fans? Yes, ah, yes, you truly perfect. do. And we have a video showing you how to wire up a relay. The reason why is a fan draws more amperage than, let's say, a remote turn on is going to put out. Because the remote turn on is only designed to turn on that like 0.03 milliamps of amplifier turn on. It's literally just doing that. It's not there to do anything. It's not there to meant to be a draw. Just like the accessory wires behind the radio now are not made for draw. They are not made to do anything. They're just it's just a switch. The the accessory wire draws almost no power. The remote turn on puts out almost no power. So if you want those relay those fans to turn on which are drawing power you mm -hmm. need a relay and they need to go to an actual power source to turn them on it's not that bad um okay uh rafael uh the hd 1200 jl i mean they say it's a good amp uh jason over here yeah, it's a dealer in. from uh from jail ada oregon yeah it's yep. a good amp. so they 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 good amplifiers all right, so we got a relay, standard five pole Bosch style relay on the bottom, which is the oddball. That's 30. 30 and 87A make contact all the time. Okay, that's something to consider when you're hooking up your power wire. There's a lot of debate on this. Uh, whatever, I put them in. This is how I particularly like to wire them up. 87 is gonna be my constant 12 volts in. 30 is going to be my 12 volts out that's gonna go to my fan. Now my trigger is going to be 85 and 86. 85 is gonna be my remote turn on input. 86 is going to be my ground. <coughs> Done. Okay. <coughs> that was a relay, huh? That was a relay. Okay, so right here There's it a says. Big one. So if you wanna get louder without changing anything, but anything but speakers, keep amps and head units the same. Would going with higher sensitivity speakers work or would, or should well, I do? Why should I do? I have Pioneer, Pioneer Z components, components up front. So those rear. are like really sensitive speakers. Yeah. So I want it Keep louder. Go louder. Keeping amps and speakers. Yeah, I mean, okay. So it's a trade off. The more sensitive you make the speaker, the less power handling it's going to have, more than likely. There's no substitute for power. Okay? There's, there's none. So, I mean, that speaker is silly loud. Uh, mm -hmm. the, those are silly loud with with deck power so you know a small 50 75 watt amplifier on they get crazy loud if you want to go louder than that well yeah actually you might need more um more speaker so like how loud it, you this want, falls yeah. in that category of the whole 3db double thing that everyone talks about you know if you put in to make it twice as loud you have to put twice as much speaker in yeah and changing to a more efficient speaker will definitely make it a tad bit louder the whole one Thanks, watt one Jason. meter will make it louder how much louder is 
really the debate. Power. Power makes things louder. Yeah. Um, what do you guys... What what, do, what does your guys' custom enclosure... I know you don't build them there. Oh, who does your custom enclosures? So we use Sean. He used to work at Bright Star. Mm -hmm. uh, he builds them now for us. So we send him over a blueprint like this. Hold on. I don't think he's doing them for anybody yet. I keep telling him he needs to open an online store. So we'll draw them up. We'll do the cool little, you know rendering of what we want him to draw and then he will make it for me that's it uh what do you think about the those spare tires sub enclosures for the H oh for H -HR. HR. if you had the room the sony was really nice uh, not the sony the jbl the JBL. I mean, it was uh, we, we had 110 decibels with it mm -hmm. i mean it was it was great i i, I have to be bold then like yeah it's, i have to it's, mount um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's no substitute for a real subwoofer in the sense of a box ported taking up room. However, if it, like in your HHR with all your DJ equipment, if you just want something bolted in there that isn't going to get in the way, it's not a bad idea. No doubt about it. All right. Um, uh, hang on. Uh, morning. Morning. Say, does the source output on the Pioneer head unit need to be put on zero when you set in the DD1? Yes. Source output. The source output. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I think he's talking about the, um, you know, where you can get source level control. Uh -huh. You can go in and you okay. can adjust it. Yeah. Plus one, plus two. Yeah. Um, we always start at zero. Yeah. And then we go from there. You know, and there again, you... Remember, gain overlap... It's just giving you some headroom, okay? So there's no... Th this is where a lot of this just gets fun. It's, it's just headroom. If you want a system that will never clip and never cause you issues and never do anything, 0 dB is that system. Like when we were talking about the Audison uh, Forza and they have the 0 dB option, that is so that that amplifier will never clip. It is zero headroom. So it's taking the worst case scenario that you're ever going to get it, give it, and it's saying, this is it. This is all you have. Now music plays differently. So depending on how much compression was added into it, when the song was, how much loudness they added to it, there's a lot of crappy things that go into a recording. When that was done to it is how that's going to play back in your car. Without having any headroom, you might play one song and it's going to sound great. You might play the next song and it's going to sound crappy. And then you'll play, okay. So having that gain overlap is what that is for. So, it, you know, if you grab the latest dope track of Drop and Hurts Crazy Bass, mm -hmm. and you put that in your car, and you have 10 dBs of gain overlap, well, you're clipping it big time. Because you've, you've got 10 dB, and that track has got loudness up the wazoo in it, and it is just going crazy. Now, the reason why 10 dB as opposed to 5 dB on the subwoofer is okay is because the subwoofer can handle way more abuse than a five and a quarter or a six and a half or a six by nine. So that big magnet, that motor structure, it can take some some not so good signal going into it, but only for so long. So you have to be, you know, that that's one of those things that just like it's like, okay guys, slow it down. Alright, four and Base boosted all the way. Yeah. Uh, we don't do motorcycles, unfortunately. No, we don't. Uh, Alberto seven R's twelves. Oh wow! On a KX twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred. How big would you? How how big would you do? Would you? Would go? you go? Yep. I can't read. Uh, would you go if you the manufacturer wreck seven to thirteen Q <laughs> and an Explorer and an Explorer and what tune a ten point five with thirty thirty eight hertz? I have no idea. You know, I built a box a long time ago. I built I built two really big boxes for kicker subs. I had a guy come in, tiny, mm -hmm. had two of the L715s and a Dodge Ram, and it took up the whole back seat. Like it was, it went from the floor to the window, and it was huge. I built it to whatever their big box spec was, and we powered it with whatever their big 2400 was at the time. Um, I just went big. It's, it's, it, whatever their big box was, I built that because I wanted it to be loud and boomy. And then we, I did a Kicker Solo Barrack 18 in the back of a Jeep Wrangler. And yeah. I did the same thing. I built it as big as possible, biggest port possible, and it was big and boom. Whatever their, whatever their loudest thing was, I built that. Yeah. And it was like, holy God, this is insane. 
So. All right, so Alberto say I have a 2018 Toyota Tacoma. I need to replace the stereo. You have something with big screen that will that will look clean with navigation. So there's two radios that are well. Navigation is the kicker there because most of the big screen units, like the Halo 9. They don't have navigation. They have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Correct. The Elevate from Stinger has the option to buy the iGo Map system for it. So I'm guessing that would be the one you'd want to look at is the Stinger Elevate with the iGo Map option. Mm hmm. 4.5 4. 5 cubic feet. There you go. There you go. The bigger the better. I, I'm with that. Install the 2006, okay, uh, 2006 Harley with the four punch clips. Really bad. <sighs> There again, I'm not real familiar with the Harleys other than to know that those factory radios sometimes need to be DEQ'd through Reflash. reflashed. Yep. Um, and Rockford also just came out with their new Harley radio that I believe is for those older Harleys. You may want to look great? at that. It's waterproof, it's sexy. There's loads um, in the house. So maybe you want to check one of those out. Get a get a newer radio in there. Um, and yeah, because if it's that single din in there, then that's what Rockford just built and it's really freaking cool uh, I have two amp setups a four channel and a mono and a 2000 f-150 super crew kappa components in the front kappa coaxes in the rear will I get noticeable improvement in audio and audio by adding the DSR one uh, to setup. my setup my head unit is the Kenwood KDC X 702 yes yes you will What's up, David? And I can attest to this because in my car right now, I have the 996. And that 996 is going into the Alpine PXE 0850S. And I can tell you right now that it makes a world of difference going into that DSP. And why is because last year I put the 9905 in. And it was cool. And it probably sounded better than the other two that I'd put in it, the Halo and the uh, Pioneer only because there's a lot more adjustments in there, but at the end of the day, it just sounded like I was pushing around the sound. Being able to have access to eight bands of equalization, one for each channel, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Now, if you're not planning on doing that, then stick with what you have, because the Kenwood will do a lot of neat things that makes it super easy to use. If you're ready to go to that next level, like I always tell people, if you've hit the wall, meaning you've adjusted everything you can adjust, and it's still not giving you what you're looking for. Then move on to the DSP. But if there's still a button or a dial or a preset or, or a function that you haven't used, in, then press it. Then move on to the DSP. And if you wanna know more about the Harley radio, Jason, uh, Stereo King in Oregon, he has oh, yeah, a video on unboxing. that. So yep. check that out. Stereo King's on YouTube. That's yep. right, he just did the unboxing on that. Uh, if it's 98 to 13. Definitely want to get that then, because it's really cool. <sighs> yeah. Going, yep, Bobby, you're going to Disney on Saturday. All I'm right. not, which oh, is really? totally wow. sad. I All know. Right. I, we need, well, you know, we just got back from vacation, so. I have a small issue. Uh, hold on, with the 4200 and your Android Auto, um, make sure you've done the latest update. They just did an update Definitely. in June. Do the update. No one ever does the updates. They always like, ah, oh, but if you've done the update and you're still having problems, that's a different story, but make sure you do the update. The cable, the cable that we use is um, the iSimple. Simple. I Simple Media. The rugged cable. I Simple. Yes. It's just I Simple. I Simple. The I Simple I rugged I say cable. Media links. Yeah. Because okay. that's the other I thing. Simple. DSP it is. All right. Cool. All right. I have a small issue with the fuse holder. It is light metal. Oh, it is light metal that could be an issue. I check all wires. Everything is good. Um, breaking, breaking my, my head. head here. Thanks, guys. Having a small issue with my, my fuse, fuse holder, holder is it's light. like melted oh it's like melted white. Oh. what can be the okay so make Ooh. sure you t make sure in the fuse the it's screws tight. are tight so here's a couple things that we've ran into with melted fuse holders because we've seen melted fuse holders over and over again the reason why you get a muted melted fuse holder is because that's your connection point. That's where the power wires coming in, power is going out. That's the break. That's where all the resistance is because it passes that through the fuse. Hoops. So first things first is you want to make sure you have the right size power wire for what you're doing. So add up all your amperage draw on the back, measure how much you power wire you have ran, and then go to something like Kicker or type in 12 volt uh, power wire calculator, Google that, and put those numbers in. And it'll tell you 
how much power you have, how much feet you have, and how big that power wire is supposed to be. That's number one. Number two, if you're doing the screw-in style thingies that, you know, the little crappy style, buy some ferrules. Stinger sells ferrules now, um, so any Stinger dealer can order you a bag of ferrules. Um, you want to use a ferrule because when you put that power wire in there and you crush it, it tears all the wires and it falls out, it gets loose and it goes bad. Secondly, if you're using CCA wire instead of 100% oxygen-free copper and not using ferrules, the wire starts to corrode in the ends and will eventually fall out, causing more heat and that's melting. Secondly, or thirdly, or whatever fourth, lock washers. Lock washers are key for fuse holders. As they expand and contract, lock washers, for some reason manufacturers don't put lock washers in the boxes anymore. The lock washers will help that fuse stay nice and tight when it's heating up and cooling off. That's about it. But my guess is it's either the fuse or the wire is loose or you're running the wrong size power wire. All right, I Australia. actually, okay, I actually, um, I, I want to see what year is his Jeep. Uh, Bay? Uh, Bay Mark? What's a good uh, set of 6x9s? 6x9s for boys. I don't care about the mid bays. By the way, my Jeep takes 6x9s in and and all my door. doors. Yeah, yeah, he's got a newer Jeep. 6x9s in the door. It's a Dodge. Okay, so that's like a Cherokee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, like... Yeah, it's not, it's oh. not, you're, you're just thinking I'm Wrangler. just thinking about it. Uh, six by nine, you, what do you want? Good voice from a six by nine, or good highs. Don't care uh, about mid bass. Um, so normally I go for the Rockford. I don't think the Rockford are going to fit. Well, they, the Z-Series, the Pioneer. Pioneer, do they make a six by nine? They do. Six by nine. Do they make, they do make a six, they make a Z-Series six by nine. Yeah. I thought they just made six and a half. The D. D sucks. That is D, D does not have that good highs. D. D's yeah. is boring as all get out. Um, okay, what about uh, Hertz? Centos. Hertz makes Cento it Pros. Nine. Check out the Centos. Check out. Go to the Hertz. Go to HertzAudison.com and check out the Hertz. Yeah. Check out the Hertz line of six by nines. Check into like the the Centos. I think is the cent. I think that's where they make the six by. I yeah. think that's where the high end six by nine went. Is into the Cento line. Yeah, Renegade Sport. Check out the Hertz. Yeah, Check out the Hertz. They might hurt your ears. Um, you. Okay. Hey, guys. From Kelly. There was one out there I wanted to answer, but I totally forgot. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, can you mirror a phone on Kenwood? Um, on the new Kenwoods that have Wi-Fi built into them, you can mirror an Android phone, not an iPhone. 2019 Chevy Silverado, Apple CarPlay, mm -hmm. non-amplified factory five, system. Uh, you can use a 2019. You can't use anything. Nothing. Um, not right now. There's nothing out for your car, so you got to do old school, high level, low level. L L L C seven I, yay. Uh, that's that's what I we mean, got right now. I mean, but they working on it. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. you're gonna see it in the next six yeah. months, but right now, no. Hurts really through a passive. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go, man. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you recommend? <laughs> yeah. Or should I do active? Um. Okay. So should you three way three way system passive or active? Here's the deal. If you have the know-how to go active, go active, all right? That's the reality of it. If you have the know-how and the budget to, to power those things up, by all means, go active. It, yes, however, if you don't, there is nothing wrong whatsoever with passive. You'll never, the likelihood of you blowing a speaker, I won't say never, the likelihood of you blowing a speaker goes dramatic down to the, almost the floor mm -hmm. because the manufacturer has designed those crossovers to make those speakers perform to their optimal performance and make it easy for you. And that's why they exist that way in the first place. Because when I started, there was no such thing as passive. It was all active. Uh -huh. And then they came out with passive to make our lives easier. Still sounds great. It's just, if you, if you, can, if you have the know-how, by all means. Biamping is also really nice. I like biamping too. Biamping seems to be the new hotness too. Have you noticed that? One of the trends. So yeah. now the new trend is to go um, biamp in that you run the passive crossover for your two and a half inch and tweeter to let the passive crossover do all the fix for you. Okay. And then you go like active on the mid bass. So, I like that. Yeah. So that's kind of like I've, I've seen like in the past two weeks, I've seen tons of posts of people talking about doing it that way. And that's like the new thing it is. And a lot of the times it's because of the because of the where it's add on. Remember, we were talking about the other day. Yeah, we we're talking about uh, minute adjustments for the time alignment, mm -hmm. because when you have the little two inch mid range and the tweeter mounted on the same plane, you're going to get a if their crossover points aren't just right, you're going to get a, that, that phasing issue. Mm -hmm. So having the ability to go in and do minute adjustments to the time alignment 
is key. Yeah. However, when you do the pass crossover, apparently all that's taken care of and you don't have to worry about it. That's, that's, so, that's, yeah. that's good. That's that's kind of that thought process there. Hi, speaker brand model. Do you recommend replace stock Cadillac Bose system? Anything and everything. They're all going to be better than that Bose system in the Cadillac. However, what you run into is you got to do the whole Get thing. The horn. You can't just like take the Bose out, keep the factory radio, and go to town. You can't do that. You got to pull it all out, start from scratch. Meaning, either yank the radio, yank the factory amp. It's all it's all or nothing in that car. Yeah. So bummer. Uh, okay, so someone asked a question. I know what it was. Someone asked a question. They said, uh, sealed ported band pass. Yeah, right here, right here. Uh, so sealed ported band pass, what's better? What do you like? They're, they're three totally different sounds. Not one is better than the other. Okay, it right all here. Depend yeah, sealed ported band pass versus, okay. So sealed band pass or, vent or vented ported. Or ported. Vented ported. Yeah, same thing. Wh okay. It's a bubble. All right, it's, it's all a bubble. It's a bubble between volume and frequency response, okay? So when you look at a seal box, all right, sorry, you have frequency response, you have volume. When you look at a ported box, you have frequency response, more volume. When you got a bandpass, frequency response, volume. So it all depends what you're trying to do. If, you're, if you like a lot of like depth to your music and a lot of precision and real precise seal box is the way to go i mean when we did that the the hertz 12 and that uh the acura tl mm -hmm. um or whatever rl or whatever it was yeah and that little tiny shoe box of a box i'm going this is gonna suck oh my god it was incredible <laughs> that was really good it was yeah. incredible it sounded amazing okay was the volume where it needed to be not for my taste I like it big, fat, and boomy. However, this was swaying me a lot to liking that because I was like, damn, <laughs> ooh, wow. Okay, so it all depends. Now that guy knew that was the sound he wanted. He had a box built like that before. He wanted the same thing. He said, trust me, Dean, I'm gonna love it. And I was like, words to my ears. I like to hear that. And it did, and I almost <laughs> loved it. I was this close to loving it and going, you don't get to keep this. Um, but yes, yeah, Fox Box, exactly. Victor has a ported Fox box in his Tacoma, in the his one we Tacoma. put the Halo 9 yeah. in. We put a Fox box in that. We didn't film that because it wasn't necessary for what we're filming it for. Sorry. But there again, big, fat, boomy, ported sound. SPL guys, or, or you know, build that tunnel, and it's like, you know, you, you like the band pass. I, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. There's yeah. no yeah. real yeah. answer to that. Uh, Fernando about got a black eye. No, it's just an illusion. No, no, it's no, no, like no, no. He's almost hit it. Like, right here. I'm a that foot in front right of his face. Um, so, that's the box question. There will be no answer to the box question. It's just as bad as saying, if I put polyfill in my box, can I... Yes, put polyfill in your box. All right, okay. so, are you saying buy amp, run the tweeters? Uh, what are you saying? Buy in amp. The range. In the three-way cross... All right, so, some crossovers allow you to do what's called buy amping. Okay, it's a passive crossover in the, uh, your Hertz that, that has the bi-amp crossover. A lot of the, all the Rockford Power Series have bi-amping built into them. What it is, is on the input section of the crossover, you have input one and two and inputs three and four. And then you have outputs. Outputs for the tweeter in the mid-range and outputs for the uh, mid-bass, okay? Or if it's just a two-way, it has two inputs, two sets of inputs, one for tweeter, one for mid, two sets of outputs, one for tweeter, one for mid. And the idea behind it is you can take a whole four channel amplifier and put it directly on that set of speakers and then you can use those passive crossovers to go by amp. So what does that do for you is specifically if you're doing time delay, that allows you to delay each speaker individually now. And also there again, it adds in the safety of the passive crossover as opposed <coughs> to I don't understand the whole active thing. But in the buy amp mode, some of the, like, for example, if you get the K2s, I know just off the top of my head, and I'm just the K2s off the top of my head, they are set up to where you can buy amp the mid range, I'm sorry, the mid bass and the mid range and tweeter on their own separate. So it's, it's, that's what buy amp means. All right, I like port it only to turn them play as flat and low as possible. Flat and low. There you go. Uh, iPhone versus sealed. <laughs> uh, I love my sealed with the L7T in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. The T sound really good in in the. Um, yeah, we're having a lot, dude. That that factory box. Which one? 
the the T factory box, the new L7 T wedge. Yeah, hammer. Holy yeah. crap! Yeah. That wedge is that it it pounds for sure. Um, but not bass that overpowers the vocals. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, when we're when we're tuning in a car, like okay. I hate simple for level control, except for when I'm tuning a car. And the reason why I hate it is because I know most people are just going to run it all the way up. When hey, I'm tuning a car, I want to be able to turn the thing down. Ah, the Sony GS, yes, those were biampable too. Yeah. Forgot about those because I love the 6x9 because I would put that in all the Chevys. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so you yeah, could yeah, run yeah, the subwoofer into yeah. the sub on the 6x9 and oh, yeah, those were like awesome. Yeah, love I that. Those. Um, time. Yeah. yeah, those were cool. Um, but anyways, back to the volume knob thing. I love the volume knob because I want to tune the system and check my crossover points, so I always turn it down. Plus, I want to hear that rich mid bass coming from the front, yeah. and I like being able to just bring in the subwoofer enough to where it's like, it's there, but it's not there. And then, of course, I want to be listening to straight up 80s hip hop and be like, balls to the wall, ice cube all day long, wow. you know? Ba down. Um, uh, which flavor of ice cream is best? Wow, Robert, way to just derail the show, man. <laughs> uh, I like a flavor of ice cream called Cookie Monster, and it's called Cookie Monster because it's blue, and it comes with cookies. Uh, sugar cookie, uh, Oreo cookie, and chocolate chip cookie dough in it. And it's a place here that makes it, and it's freaking awesome, and yeah, I like it. And it turns your poop green because it's blue. It's like Superman. Which is funny if you think about it, because yeah. Superman ice cream turns your purple blue, okay, and I don't want to know and, that. Well, it does. Your kid will get it when okay. he's old enough to have ice cream, and I'll buy him some if he doesn't. But what is Superman afraid of? Which is kryptonite, which yeah. is green. Yeah. So, you poop out kryptonite. <laughs> eh? Okay. And I blame all that on Robert, because he derailed the show. What do you got? All right, answer questions. All right, let's see. I have Craig says I run a port box with two ten kicker comp R's. Listen most likely hard rock and metal, metal music, and some country and rap. Uh, it's ported box, okay? Or should I switch it and go seal and closure? There again, I love ported. Don't get me wrong. It's not, I'm not an advocate for sealed box. I yeah. like ported. Ported is boomy and bass and fat and strong and bring it on, bro. Uh, someone asked back the TR7 remote trigger versus a 12 volt relay you talked about in the videos. Um, a TR7 is totally different than a relay. A TR7 there again is a low voltage cool. trigger designed to trigger something else such as a relay. You can do a lot of things with a TR7 such as add delay, do pulse timing, um, different stuff. But there again it's low voltage or low, I'm sorry, it's low amperage, my bad, mm -hmm. and that low amperage needs to go off to relays. So for example if you had like a, a if you had a turn off pop when you turn off your car, you'd use a TR7 to put a timer on there so that you'd have the amplifiers wait like 30 seconds to turn off, but then you'd use that to trigger the relay to turn those amplifiers off because the TR7 doesn't pass enough. I mean, for one amp, yes, but for multiple amps and fans, no. Um, kicker type R, uh, Comp RT, Comp, Comp RT. R, yeah. Comp R's, those are nice. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, what do we got? Any tips for running speaker wire through the doors of 2013 Zeta? Just kidding. I know it's impossible and just need a good, a good laugh. laugh. Thanks, <laughs> that was a laugh. <laughs> no, man, that's wrong. That's wrong. Uh, Focal Flax FX is bi-ampable. Okay. Probably. I'm sure it is. I, I, I never even look at it. I don't I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think in my head. <laughs> do I just overlook it? Can I probably do. Uh, can you ask? Oh, can you the elevate? That's the elevate. Oh, when the elevate's gonna be uh, when the in elevator. Australia. I like that. It's gonna be released in Australia. That's a good question. That's a good question. I think okay. Paul, I think the reason why it's not getting released yet over there is because they're using us to figure out all the things that they need to do on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you that just be patient if it's something you're interested you might want to just because it'll probably be a year or two i'm just guessing it'll be if it anything it'll be sometimes next year and the elevate that's currently out now they just came out with a reiteration of it now you can flip it mm -hmm. and we're hoping to get our hands on one of those so we can shoot a video showing that but it's an expanding line of products just like the halo 9 when we first got that we're like oh it's cool now there's two of them mm -hmm. Maybe something like that might happen with the Elevate. 
Okay, I think uh, Martin, I think Dean said yes, we always start at zero. Like we always keep it zero. Dean, my question earlier was about the source level of jaws. Uh, yes. I just wanted to make sure if you. It's flat. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, and that's what I was saying. Source level adjust on radio. For those who aren't familiar with source level adjust, um, source level adjust is a cool feature built into all aftermarket radios that allows you to match voltage outputs of every source. So most of the time it starts at tuner being your main source and then from there you can up or down. This also helps a lot if you have a phone like an Android phone that doesn't have a really hot output. You can go to source level adjust and turn up your Bluetooth, turn up your aux, turn up your USB volume so that when you're changing between sources they all play at the same level. If you ever caught one of the radio dyno videos we did. Bye Victor. We used that Oh, okay, it's John, thank you. Oh, wow. Did you like that little not so much? Anyways, um, uh, is the Halo 9 selling well? Not really for us. Um, not really. I'm going to ask Alpine. Uh, yeah, that's there. a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. That, all right, Sean, good. I see where you're going with that. That's a good question because for us it really doesn't do well. Yeah. Um, but then again, I feel like, see, I, see, this is where I like what the Elevate is doing. Because they're coming out with the Camaro kit, which we showed on the show. Yeah. We talked about the JK kit, J, JK kit mm -hmm. that we talked about on the show with Nathan. Yeah. So those are those are approved topics that we can talk about. Mm -hmm. And that I feel is is cool because they're taking the radio and they're 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 doing a lot of fun with it and they're allowing us. I see the direction they're going and I like it. The Elevate is just a floating singleton radio. And I think that was Alpine went too far yep. with the restyle, and this is them dialing back. And I think Amp is coming in there right in the middle. They're making one product that's going to be able to do what the restyle did and what the Elevate's doing. So I think that's that's kind of where Amp is is um, a sponsor of our trip to Knowledge Fest yep. is is really going to excel as time goes on. But we'll see. Yep. Uh, radio stop working. Can it be the fuse? Very rarely it's the fuse. I would try the reset. A lot of times radios are real susceptible to what's called AC ripple. AC ripples when you start the car, your alternator or your voltage regulator does dumb stuff and, and shoots. The radio doesn't like it. AC through it. It's kind of like a bolt of lightning for a DC product. And sometimes the radio will just lock up. There are fuses on the back of the radio that could go bad. Mm -hmm. It happens from time to time. So definitely you might want to check that out. Yeah. Um, you can check I like that, that question. <clears throat> Uh, the TR7 is programmable. The TR7 is totally programmable. And you have TR7 Pro, which you can program from your computer, which I strongly recommend doing. Uh, uh, you know, especially if you're trying to do something with timer, get the Pro and set it from your computer because trying to do that from the TR7, that is... Uh, what was the anyway, question? I, I have... Uh, hold on, do you question earlier about the source no, level yeah, yeah, adjustment? We okay, we got yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you guys feel about the Rockford T1 subs? About to I bought, bought one and I'm supposed, supposed to build, to build a box, box. but I'm, I'm having, having a second thought. It's like maybe L7Q. Okay, okay, that's that one. Yeah. Uh, I, I run, run 112 port in it. Ooh, that's nice. I like T750. Um, I don't know. Do you have an opinion on that? I mean, the uh, L7Q is really nice, and the, the T1 is, is, is T1 nice. is and really nice. And the T1 is nice. Ooh, man, man that's, that's a good one. That's a tough call. Yeah. I don't even know which one would be louder because you look at the T1 as a long throw woofer, but you look at the L7, which is especially the Q, which yeah. is now the Q. You can buy in the kicker box if you don't feel like buying a box. So you can buy that pre-made in that blue kicker box, which mm -hmm. is really nice and sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. um, hmm, that's a tough call. Ooh, man, Have you ever heard be... of square sub before? That right. Might be the, that exactly. might be the deciding factor there, because yeah. not everyone is down for square. Yeah. I mean, I am, but I mean, not everyone. Really wanted a bigger screen in my car, so what's the biggest floating screen out? I think the 550 10 is a 10.1 screen, if I remember correctly. I thought it was a, is it a 10.1? Yeah, it might be a 10.1. I don't know. Those got recalled, and they just came back in, mm -hmm. so... Um, I Don't think know. that's it, but it's not a floating screen. It's it's just a panel. It's made. It's not doesn't come with any mounts. It's not an Elevate or or a, a Halo Nine. It's just a panel that's made to be mounted into a dash kit. So, so if your car fits their dash kit lineup from Metra, then that would be the one to go with right now. Right this now. point in time, like right this moment, next year could be different. Yeah, just saying. Evening, Justin. Um, what is what is Keith asking? Uh, where is Keith? I get FaceTime calls when I hang on. 
plan. Have to unplug, replug. Did you, there again? Did you update the 2300? All all Pioneer NEX radios got an update in June. So if you haven't, done, firmware is up to date. It's up to date. Any ideas? Okay, so that, that I didn't get that far. Have to plug and okay, so mm, that might be an Apple problem then. A lot of these silly things like that are just uh, it's an eight inch. Okay, so there you go. Brandon, MECP. There you go. Brandon is in. Read the books. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that's a tough one because like a 2300, I would call Pioneer Tech on that one. I, I would honestly just give them a call and see if anyone else has reported that as an issue. It might just be something that is right now an issue and not anything else. I get so... <laughs> Aaron, I love Aaron's comment. I get so yeah, excited when Dean says right now. I get so excited. I'm not that. saying we, we we sign those non-disclosure agreements, but sure. we kind of verbally sign the non-disclosure agreements. So Verbal. I have to kind of say <laughs> there's a non-disclosure agreement involved in some of the conversations we have, and we can't talk about certain things until they tell us we can talk about certain things. Uh, and I love those conversations, by the way, because I just sit over here and go, can't answer that yet. Tell me where we are right now. We are in Clearwater, Florida. Um, I don't know. I, I like to refer to it as kind of circling the drain a little bit <laughs> as the show slowly spirals into nowhere. Yeah. But that's okay, you know, because the show's almost over. So if you you want to look us, AC uh, Ripple killed my pioneer. Five Star Car Stereo, Clearwater, Florida. Cross Street from the original Hooters. That's what we are. Just turn the windshield into one big touch brain. I'm more of a fan of the whole, you know, like Soundman likes to do with the whole Tom Cruise movie. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. I think we've tortured you enough. Thanks so much for tuning in for this episode of Car Stereo Talk with me, Dean. And I'm Fernando. Don't forget, this show is brought to you by I'm um, Global, Stinger, Phoenix Goal, Echo Master, Echo Master and uh, Pack things. Audio, Best Kids, and all this, the cool stuff that they make. Yes, and though it's not this week, this Saturday we'll be live again on YouTube where you can ask us more questions. We'll have a lot more fun. Don't forget to tune in to our Instagram where we do the five minutes with five star, which I don't think has been five minutes since we started. Uh, you do have to have an appointment. There is no such thing as a walk-in. At least not anymore. Uh, guys, call, always call, awesome. Call. Give Paul a call. 727-216-6170. Bye, Brandon. See and you, with man. that, we will see you guys Saturday. You guys have a wonderful week. Or actually, we'll see you tomorrow on Instagram. Oh, that's Check right. Check us out there for 5 Minutes with 5 Star. Hopefully, we'll have something cool to talk about tomorrow. And if not, we'll figure something out. We oh, always we do. Definitely. That's kind of yes, how it goes. Exactly. You guys have a wonderful week. See you later. Bye. <laughs>